Hey, what's happening my gangsters? Uh, today's tutorial is going to be on adding text and shapes using the essential graphics in Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, basically, I'm just going to go over um, all the features in the essential graphics box located up here when you add text. Um, I guess this tutorial is for people that aren't very familiar with how to add text or shapes in Premiere. So uh, what I'm going to show you um, is just kind of an overrun. So basically when you're looking at your um, desktop here, you'll see this icon down here with the big T for text. If you click on that little arrow at the bottom right hand corner, it'll pull up two options. 99% of the time you're going to want this first one checked. Um, this is what you're going to do when you add text. Basically, if you select the second one, I'll give you a quick example. If you select it, you go up here and when you're ready to add your text, um, it's going to type downwards. See how it's doing that? So I'm going to undo that. If you ever need to type down like that, that's what you're going to do. Uh, it probably doesn't happen very often. So when you add any text normally, you're going to want that first one. So basically you click that type tool and now what you can do is you can go into um, your display here and you add the text wherever you want just by clicking in it. So I'm going to go ahead and add my text and you have it there. So um, I'll show you two ways you can go in and manipulate your text and animate it. Um, you can go into, basically you can go into your effect controls over here on the left side or wherever you have your setup, or you can use the essential graphics. I'll go over the essential graphics since um, that's the update that Adobe made to adding text. Um, so basically what you do is you'll see this located over here. Um, if it's not, you can go over to window and hit us essential graphics and uh, it'll show up over here. So now that it's in here, um, what it does is it creates this layer here and it shows you your text tutorial. Um, and we'll start at the top. You have your alignment functions up here where you can align it centered horizontally and vertically, or you can adjust it through these two, your position two ways you can go in there and type it or you can scroll over it left or right up or down if you want it perfectly centered you just do that and that's a perfect center on your screen um, then you have this option over here too which seems to be the same position to be honest with you I'm not really sure oh that moves your anchor point okay uh, I wasn't familiar with that because I usually do that over in the effect control so um, same thing your anchor point will move by you adjusting this. You can see it if you collect or if you click your arrow button over here. And you can see see the anchor points over here. It's going to move your text, but essentially the anchor point on the text is moving too. So um, you can also click on the anchor point and just drag it to wherever you want on your text. So That'll come in handy if you're ever trying to do animations. If you're trying to spin your text around, it'll spin around that anchor point. Whereas if you move it here, then the text will swing around this, the end of your text. So that's where the anchor point comes in handy. Um, also, when you're resizing it, you can drag your text by clicking on these arrows. Right here, you can drag that. If you don't want the perspective to like the height and the width of your text, you want to manipulate like just the height, but you, you want to keep it the same width, you would just click that. And now you can go up, sideways, down. But if you want it to keep perspective, then you click on that where it locks it down. And now it adjusts the height and the width at the same time. Um, your master styles, I'm not sure what that is. I haven't used it yet. If you know what it is, leave it in the comments. I don't mess with it 
Okay, here's something that um, I, I put out a tutorial on this actually on your um, the font on how to uh, see your font. This is your font that you're going to use. Now, when you click on the drop down, it, it pulls up this list of all the fonts. And in the past, like so, a lot of platforms, it would show what the font actually looks like, like say, you know, Bell MT. Well, this right here would look or give you an example of what Bell MT looks like, but it doesn't. It's all the exact same font through here. So if you're not sure, like me, I wasn't one of these font gurus that know every type of font and they can spit out all these fonts. I'm just not that guy. It's not me. That's not how I roll. Um, so I would get annoyed because I'd go through all these fonts trying to figure out which one looked better. Well, a faster way to do that is if you come over here and you hover your cursor over the font box and you use your scroll button, your scroll wheel on your, um, on your mouse, you scroll up and down, you see my font changing. So you can kind of see and get a quick glance. You see a change in, in the uh, box and then also in the display. So that'll come in handy if you're just, you're not sure you're kind of new to this and you don't know all the fonts yet. Um, that'll help you out. So, um, okay, uh, over here down below that you have where you can italicize it bold or do bold italics. A lot of these are com common sense. If you've ever done any sort of word processing, you can create a tab um, by adjusting this in or out and, um, you know, depending according to your needs. Here's some functions that let, let you adjust the spacing on your text. Like this will let you adjust the spacing between the letters, squeeze it or expand it. Um, this will, if you have two lines, it'll give you your line spacing. I don't have two lines on this. Uh, this will move it up or down. I'm not sure what the difference between that and the position is, but if you know what this actually is, the purpose of this little function, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Um, and then you have another one here that'll move it, kind of shrink it. And again, I really honestly don't know what the difference is between these two. Uh, so like I said, if you know it, go ahead and leave it in the description. Um, and then you come down here to your fill and that's common sense. What color are you gonna to wanna to fill it with if you want it to be red? You know, you come down here and click okay and now it turns red. Uh, or you can dip it if you wanna uh, sample a color from some background video or something you have. Same with the stroke and shadow. These are all common sense items. Uh, when you click your stroke, if you want it to have a white stroke, you keep that. If you want to adjust the thickness or the width of your stroke, go up like that same with your shadow if you want we'll do a white shadow since I have a black background and then you can adjust your shadow your opacity bring it down bring it up you can adjust where it's going a lot of this stuff can be keyframe too to create animations um, this kind of moves it, offsets it whichever way you want it. Um, and this kind of feathers it out. Looks like 80s disco kind of. So, um, okay, so that's how you basically add and manipulate any sort of text using the essential graphics. You probably know all this can be done, all these adjustments can be done over here in your effect controls as well. Um, now, if you want to add a shape, um, what you do is see this little new layer. What this does is it's going to create, um, layers within this graphic here. And, and I don't know, I, I don't think I showed you guys when you add your text, it created this, um, graphic right down here. So, um, so say you want to add another text, you'd go up here. So I want to add text again. You just click text, it would create a new text layer, or you want to create a shape. You have two options, rectangle or ellipse. So say you want to add a rectangle, you just click rectangle. Now see how it added this layer, but it's still one graphic down here, but they're in the same, they're two, two separate layers. So the same thing really applies to your shape layer. 
as to your text, you know, all the options down below that we went through. If you wanted to center it, same thing. Um, you want to position it here or there or whatever. Um, same thing with your, if you're going to resize it, you'd go here to resize it, right? Um, you can bring your opacity down like that. Same thing, fill stroke, okay? So that's pretty um, cut and dry. Um, now, if you want to animate any of this stuff, this is where you would come over to your effect controls. And using keyframes, you can create animation. So as you see over here, you'll see I have both my layers. I have the text, and when I click on that, it highlights in my display. It says text, and it says what you have typed there, tutorial which is what I have. So then, you and here's all your settings like you had over in Essential Graphics. You can manipulate it with your color, your stroke, your shadow, and all that. Um, but what you can also do is add your keyframes over here to create animations. And down here below that, you'll see I have my shape. So I have, basically I have a text layer and a shape layer in this one graphic. Now make sure when, if you're gonna go over and animate this in effects controls, you gotta highlight this on your timeline. So like if if I have my black video highlighted, I go to effects controls, see how there's nothing there? You have to highlight this on your timeline and now it brings up everything that you have over here in your essential graphics, both layers, or however many layers you add. You could add multiple layers. I don't know what the max is. If you know what it is, go ahead and put it in the comments. Um, I don't know if it's unlimited or not. So once you go over here, I'm at the sky's the limit with your animations. So say um, you wanted to just bring the this box in. You want to expand it from nothing. Basically what you would do is um, under your scale, your, now your scale manipulates your size, right? If you see as I'm going back and forth. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll... I'll move the anchor point over here so that it, it comes in from the center. Um, so what you want to do is if you want your um, graphic just to come in out of nothing and expand to whatever size you want it to, you'd have to hit this little stopwatch here. Oh, not at the anchor point, at the scale, because we're going to size it down and then size it to whatever size you want. So you'd come here and you'd hit this. And see how it creates a, um, a keyframe here? So then what you do is you've got your scale size. You bring it all the way down. So right here, this keyframe represents this graphic at a zero which is basically nothing. It's not going to show up on your screen. So say you want this graphic to come in over several frames. Then what you would do is you move it however many frames you want it to where it's going to be expanded at the full expansion. And then you come over here and you can either click in it or you can just hover over it and see how it's coming in now. And you adjust it to whatever size you want. So now you've just animated your graphic. Same thing applies to your text. Um, and if you want this graphic to animate smoothly, which um, most of the time you're going to want to do that, when it comes to a stop, I'll go ahead and play this, it just kind of comes to an abrupt stop. Well, if you want it to come to a smooth stop, you right click on the keyframe, first highlight it, right click it, and then you go into ease in, or you click ease in. And see how it changed it? It looks kind of like a, um, a one of those uh, clocks with sand in it or timers with sand. You turn it over. So now as it expands, it'll come to a smooth stop rather than kind of an abrupt stop. Um, and you could do that with the entry. You could ease it out. Um, I don't know if you'll really see it since it's so small, but I meant to play it safe. You could do that. And that's how you do it. Now, same thing applies to text. Everything I'm showing you here with the shape applies to text. And everything I'm showing you with these keyframes applies to anything. As you can see here, you've got all these options. Your position, which is basically if you scroll through, see how it's moving. You can animate these with keyframes out here, just like we did with your scale. The rotation, 
same thing go there you add a couple keyframes or you can add more than two keyframes i mean if you want to animate this thing you know to go all, all over the place whoops um if you want to animate this thing it looks like my screen froze so it's probably going to shut down on me oh no anyway so um i basically went over uh, everything i was going to show you anyway just how to add um, and manipulate it and animate it. Um, so I'm sorry this bugged out at the last second, but I'm glad it was kind of um, close to being over anyway. So uh, if you have any other questions, you're trying to do something with your text or your shapes, let me know. Um, just remember that uh, you can um, add new layers here in your essential graphics. You can go manipulate the fill and everything. And then when you want to animate it, uh, a lot of the manipulation can be done over here too. Um, you do it all there. You can feather it and you can basically customize text and shape any way you want it. And uh, depending on your creativity and how much time you want to spend, you can come out with some really sick animations and uh, text effects on this stuff. So um, if you like this tutorial, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more, subscribe. Um, I've I started doing Adobe Premiere in the last six months and um, as I go through and learn more, I'll be doing more tutorials from time to time. Um, so that's basically it. Thanks, guys. I'm out. Peace.